Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, my name is Caballero and you're watching VWE Friday Night Edge in Second Life and this is happening at the Empire City Coliseum. And look at that, the show has just started. So what is happening? I don't know. And I believe the former uh, Radius Champion is entering the ring. So right now we have um, Rani Patel and she is addressing the crowd. And she's saying, my very, very good friend. And who's that? The undisputed and reigning VWE Radiance Champion. Brooke Owens. And then, of course, we have some applause. Tips for kissing Brooke's ass so much right there. Here she comes, please welcome the Radiance Champion, Brooke Owens! Okay, so entering the ring right now is the VWE reigning Radiance Champion, Brooke Owens. She was introduced by Rani Patel, the former VWE Radiance Champion. The, we have the former and the reigning. Are we going to see some drama in the ring? Who knows what will happen tonight here in uh, VWE Friday Night Edge. Uh, I think I can see an imprint on the back of Brooks' tights from all that asking. Oh, will you stop? Oh, that's what I was thinking when they no announcement. Well, you see the two sharing a high five up in the center of the ring here. Well, the commentator said they shared a high five. I didn't see it. Thank you for that very, very, very nice int introduction. Four fairies there. Two weeks ago, I came out here and defeated the Bird of Prey Lyra Phoenix to win back this beautiful title, and now I sit here your two-time Radiance Champion. Only two times. And of course, last week, Ronnie was defeated by Ellie Embers, but that's okay because I know that Ronnie did her best. Plus, Ellie had to cheat to win. Why do you have to mention that Rani, that Rani uh, was defeated? I don't think that's nice, or that's it's nice to remind her that she were she was defeated by Ellie Embers. <laughs> Roddy, uh, Roddy's in agreement. She says, yes, yes, Brooke. I don't know what got into me. I was just so frustrated. But you did a spectacular job of taking down the dirty rat bird. With the good karma you have now, nothing can stop you. Oh, 
can they just kiss and get it over with? Brooks says, thank you, Ronnie. Now, Ellie, I know you demanded a shot at the Radiance title tonight, and I accepted, so get your ass down here and let's do this right now. Ah, oh, we're going to have a championship match. Title match, but it looks like we're going to have a Radiance championship match right now. How about that, folks? Hey, sir. I don't have Sam Ellen and now that's a title match. I mean, it's either the Banshee, which actually I agree with that name because she's always sounded like a Banshee to me, or it's these two with their ass kissing contest. I don't know where to go. Please welcome from Bristol, England, standing 5 feet 9 inches tall and 132 pounds, she is the Banshee, Ellie Embers. Miss Owens, you are quite the spoiler of surprises. You can see that uh, their voices are clipping because it's all red. Their microphone is, their microphones are really, really loud. Tut, tut. Ah, no wonder it's loud. Look at that. It's, it's right over there. Look at that. Way to the right. My goodness. Let's bring that down. So no wonder the, the voices were very, very loud that their voices were like clipping. I guess that was my fault. <laughs> Okay, so I guess we're going to have a match between Ellie Embers and Brooke Owens for the VWE Radiance Championship. And we just saw Rani Patel. She went out of the ring with the VWE Radiance Championship belt. And uh, they are going to have a match without a reverie. What is Ellie Embers doing? <laughs> okay, so, well, there is no reverie. I'm sure there is a referee, but my guess is I might have uh, de-rendered the referee. Choking the daylights out of her. And what kind of move is that? Ellie Embers is forcing, what's that, her knee or her leg, right on. Uh, Brooke Owens, what? Face or neck? Or chest? You can see that uh, Brooke Owens is struggling. Well, I think even Ellie Embers is struggling. This is somewhat weird. Okay, 
Was that a spear? A quick spear in that position and then uh, this time Brooke Owens the one pummeling Ellie Embers. Having there, I'm going to move closer to the action. Hold on, hold on. So I went closer to the action. I turn off the uh, the. I turn off second life for uh, a while. As I go down from from the uh, bleachers <laughs> down to the. What do you call this? Ring area. Now dropping the elbow right. And we have a pin here. One, two. Okay. It was only a two count. Another one 
say it uses your legs a lot. <laughs> Springboard 180 leg drop right there from the Banshee. Two spectacular moves in succession for the Banshee, Ellie Embers, here tonight. Could we be looking at a brand new Radiance champion? Ellie Embers picks her up from behind. What is she? Look at this. Here comes the neck wrench. That's a very painful hold right there that Brooke Owens is trapped in. And now dropping the fist right to the neck. That just went from bad to worse for Brooke Owens. You can hear Ronnie Patel shouting out encouragement. Some moves to try from here at ringside. Ellie Embers continues to drop the fist under the neck of Brooke Owens. And now a break. Brooke, or Ellie Embers, rather, in firm control of the match here. She picks up Brooke by the hair once again. Did she just kiss Brooke on the forehead? Good grief. Uh, oh, it's going to take a lot of scrubbing to get off. All the Boma Yay knee right there from the Banshee. Into a roll-up. Count of one. Count of two. Only a two count. Brooke gets the shoulder up. There's that Banshee scream right there from Ellie Embers. That tells you she is about to execute something big here when you hear that Banshee scream from Ellie Embers. Into the ropes. Ellie follows her right in. Look at that back body drop from Brooke. Takes Ellie right over the top rope down to the floor right in front of the broadcast table. And Ronnie Patel is right there. Now, folks, gotta not be stupid here. No, do something stupid. He's do well, doing something stupid. Well, she just hit the flying forearm from the top rope down to the floor. Didn't miss with it. But she's immediately clutching at that leg right after it happened. She sure is. That leg can't hold up. She's got to change her strategy. You can see her trying to, trying to shake that leg, get some feeling back into it. That leg of Brooke Owens has taken a lot of punishment here. But Ellie Ember is taking the back body drop over the top rope, landing on the floor. And there's a whip back into the ring. Ellie is back inside. Brooke is hobbling, trying to get back in there before the referee makes it to 10. Not downing her. It's just simple things, simple strategy. you got to adjust your strategy according to this situation. I'd say for sure Brooke Owens needs some good karma here. 
because she has been punished. That leg of hers has been taking a lot of damage here tonight from the Banshee, Ellie Embers. Brooke struggling and to get back into the ring. And yet she keeps leaping off the rope. She keeps and using it. There it is people. again. Manchester Storm right there, and she hit it. Count of one, two. I couldn't tell. Was that a th – did she get three? Nope. Only a two only, count, Johnny. Only a two count. And she definitely used their leg there. No, that was a three count. You springboard off. You got to use your legs. My monitor went on the blink there for just a second, but now everything's – just give it a good whack. Everything seems to be working once again. The referee counted three. Look at that. Three, 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 three. three. Corner, and Brooke Owens is going to charge in there once more. Don't go to the well too many times or else that happens. That is the howling stretch right there from the Banshee. She has got Brooke trapped in that, in that, in that howling stretch right there. And keep your eyes on Ronnie. She has got the Radiance Championship in her hands. Well, finally, the howling stretch is broken. All sunset flip, sunset flip, reverse nip up from Brooke. Here she comes once again off the ropes. Baseball slide elbow rocks the jaw of Ellie Embers. She's finally at least done a maneuver that doesn't put too much stress on her leg to perform. Now's the opportunity for Brooke Owens to go to work here. She is the Radiance champion. The championship is at stake in this match. And now cravat knees right to the face of the Banshee, Ellie Embers. But what's interesting is she's using that injured knee to deliver those elbow strikes. Now a Muay Thai spin back kick off the ropes. Here comes Ellie. And there's a kick right to the midsection. Look at this. Falcon's arrow. That was not a good maneuver. Because she had to lift up Ellie's weight above her, and that's putting stress on her leg. Ellie is not a small person. And Brooke is very clearly favoring that right leg of hers. She's trying to, she's slapping it, hitting it, trying to get some, doing whatever she has to do to get some feeling back into that injured leg. And now Ellie Ember's out on the floor. Is Brooke going out after her? She was smart. She wouldn't. But then well, again, she is. She's going out. To, she's going out after Ellie. And and Ellie just shoved her right into the ring apron. The spine of Brooke Owens heading right into that ring apron, the hardest part of the entire ring. All oh, did you see that? Did you see that kick there from Ellie Embers? Are you kidding me? Folks, women don't have the same anatomy that us guys have, but that kick still hurts. I don't care what anybody says. Of course. The action continues outside the ring. Snap suplex out on the floor from the Banshee, Ellie Embers. You know, that's why she shouldn't have went outside. Interesting that the There's referee is not counting. Advantage. Well, now it's he's counting. Means, it just means he's incompetent. And these two are just fighting it out right here at ringside. The referee's up to, referee Earl's up to a count of three. You know, if I was smart, and I am definitely not claiming she is, she'd get broken the ring because she cannot win the title. By a countout. Well, there's a whip, and Brooke Owens is now back inside the ring. Here comes the Banshee, Ellie Embers. Uh, some of the fans are complaining about the referee, but on my screen, there are no referees. Count of one, count of two. Only a two count. Brooke's still able to get the shoulder up. 
because the referee counted three earlier. Oh, there's that band. The referee yeah. messed up. Bachamania. Picks up Brooke by the hair once again. There's a whip into the ropes. Brooke Owens off the ropes. Ellie Embers from the opposite side. Look at that rocket kick right there from Brooke. Again, using that bad leg. Well, Austin, there's nothing she can do about that because the animation uses the right leg. <laughs> Unless, of course, there is a, an alternate animation where... Ah, oh, look at that, what happened. Ooh. So, Rani Patel is now a heel. That's what you call Rani Gone Wild. Your winner will be Brooke Owens by disqualification. But what in the hell? You insolent, pathetic whelp! Do you realize what you have just done? And there's a discus punch for Ronnie <laughs> that just puts Ellie right on her backside. She hit Ellie too. I don't, I don't know what her plan was, but she's my hero. And Ronnie says that's as close as you'll ever get to the Radiance title, Ellie Embers. But why did Ronnie hit Brooke with the championship? They're supposed to be friends. Well, Brooke is trying to get back up to her feet. Now she's back up. And Brooke is screaming at Ronnie, what the hell was that? Brooke Owens in disbelief over what has just happened in this ring here tonight. And Ronnie says, I, I just couldn't let Ellie win. And Ellie Embers from behind went for the spear. Clocked Brooke from behind. Ronnie got out of the way. I, I, I don't know what's going on here. And now Ellie just speared Ronnie. And now she's pounding the daylights out of Ronnie Patel. And now the choke to Ronnie, the same choke that she did to Brooke earlier in the match. Ellie screaming at Ronnie Patel and saying, you will pay. And there's that banshee scream once again. I'm going to guess they're going to have a triple threat match. That's just a guess, but I'm sure they're going to have a triple threat match. This absolute shit show between you three and whoever is involved with this damn Radiance Championship picture. If it isn't Rani warring with Ellie or Lyra Phoenix getting involved in all of this crap, frankly, this is a waste of my time, it's a waste of the crowd's time, and frankly, we need one final resolution to all this going on. So... Or maybe even a fatal four-way, including Lyra Phoenix. And head to the back and prepare for December 14th. Because we're going to end this once and for all in a free way dance for the Radiance Championship. Tata for now. Oh, I like that one. Wrestle Series Wrestle Series 10. One more match has been added. A triple threat between Ronnie Patel, Ellie Embers, and the reigning Radiance Champion Brooke Owens. 
you know, I was giving Ronnie some credit for what she was doing, but she's showing she maybe she's not as smart as I thought she was with that move. Well, don't forget, folks, we still have a main event tonight between the gunslinger Matt Azadar, who is undefeated since joining VWE, and the world heavyweight champion, the last Carson standing, Michael Carson. That is your main event tonight right here on Friday Night Edge. You know, I wonder if Brooke is still feeling that good karma from her new good friend, Ronnie. She still doesn't want to go back to the Black Swan. Son of a bitch. Please welcome your United States champion. He is the icon, DHA, David Hawk, actor. It's like a mudslide. First I had to hear Ellie, and now I got to hear David. This night's not going your way for certain, is it? <sighs> I'm just hoping for the end of the night to make it all worth it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, was a rough four days in the actor household. To the point I had given up hope and was at the merchandise stand ready to purchase a replica like, like Austin was talking about sending to Jeff. But, my fellow Americans, the light shone through. Just a couple hours ago, the U.S. Championship was found and I was elated. Oh, I'm sorry. For you uneducated liberals who only believe what CNN and NBC tell you, that means I was happy to have the title back where it belongs. Empire City PD said it was delivered anonymously, and it had been wiped down, so no prints. Even think about that, no prints. Not even those of the icon you deserve. But this moment in history has taught me something, ladies and gentlemen. From now on, I expect my wife to be very upset when I hold this tightly when I sleep like a baby clutching a teddy bear. When I make sure that this championship sits in the front seat, seat belted in, and she's got to ride in the back with the kids. Because I know what matters the most in my life. And that is right around my waist here, this blue strap representing the red, white, and blue of America. But, on a sad note, because there was no evidence left on the title itself, unfortunately, the charges will have to be dropped. Now, the investigation is still ongoing, but there isn't exactly enough to convict Knight, the known perpetrator. You know it, I know it, the cops know it, there's just not enough to convict. But it is a shame that the architect of Annihilation thought he could play these mind games with me by stealing the U.S. title. And you patriots out there, do not be swayed by the conspiracy theorists sitting near you claiming that I lost the championship or that Cheryl White and I masterminded this elaborate scheme just to get Knight arrested. If I wanted that guarantee, the evidence would have been on there. I would have planted it myself. He would have been convicted. Now, the sheep might fall for something that ridiculous. But you real patriots know what kind of champion I am. No one in my campaign would be foolish enough to sink that low. That's what the left-wingers do. That is not what a proud American does.
But another thing this has shown me is the kind of man that Knight is. He isn't a worthy challenger. I thought he was a true American, but no. He is lazy. He is shiftless. His friends all live in a crack den, for Christ's sake. This is a man proud of his food stamps each and every month. He is not the U.S. champion you deserve, and not even in the same league as the pound-for-pound pound greatest wrestler ever. I hear sirens. Okay. There's a police cruiser pulling into the arena. What? Why is I mean? What? Why the hell are the cops here? And there's what? night. I mean, what, you're... what is this? Officer, whoever was driving this vehicle, officer is this man night. should not. This man should not be anywhere near me right now. He is a thief. He is a liar. You people need to stop cheering for this man. He is what makes all of you sheeple look ridiculous. He is a mockery of America. Damn it, do you hear me? Stop cheering him. The cuffs are off. This man tried to make a smear campaign against your U.S. champion. Do not let him near me. Officer, security, do not let Hey, hey, stay back. Stay out there. Knight has been released by the police, and now he's after the United States champion. And DHA escaping through the crowd. I tell you what, that's a match I want to see at Wrestle Series 10. Johnny, you do know that he hasn't earned any title shots, right? Well, he could still get one anyway. Falsely accused. False, falsely accused of a crime. Come on. Okay, where's your proof that it's a falsely accused? I don't have to prove his innocence. Guilt has to be proved under our jur or under our system of jurisprudence. Nonetheless, I walked around covering his face most of the time. I don't, I don't think she let them smoke him. We still have a huge main event to come tonight between the undefeated gunslinger Matt Azadar and the BWP World Heavyweight Champion, the last Carson standing, Michael Carson, tonight. Also still to come, the return of the gavel, Adun Snowpaw taking on the Extreme Champion, Razor Diesel. That match is next, right here on Friday Night Edge. And I'd like to point out, David does not represent America as much as he says he does. Please welcome your VWE Extreme Champion, Razor Diesel. This match for the VWE Extreme Championship, 
And now introducing from Montreal, Quebec, Canada, standing 6 feet 2 inches tall at 236 pounds, he is the gavel, a dude, Snowpaw. This is a man we have not seen in the seen in the ring since I would venture a guess at twenty twelve. You know, he could have stayed in twenty twelve. I would have not complained. This match is for the extreme championship, that championship always at stake twenty four seven. Any time, any place, anywhere, anything can happen. If you were with us Monday night at prime time, you saw the video of the heinous act perpetrated by the Ascension inside the office of our chairman, Stuart Wharf. You can take a look at Adun Snowpaw's face. You can see the results of that attack. You know, that really was the result of Johnny What's disrespecting that? our chairman. Did you listen to Adun during that whole conversation? He had no respect for... The authority of our chairman, Stuart Wharf, and when you don't respect the chairman or his rules, you have to answer to an ascension. Well, to, in Gavel's mind, he is the judge, jury, and the executioner of all that happens here in VWE. Right now, he's standing across the ring from the VWE Extreme Champion, Razor Diesel. Championship at stake in this match, as it always is, with a 24-7 rule attached. There's the bell. This championship match now officially underway here on Friday Night Edge. It is the champion, Razor Diesel. It is the challenger, the gavel, Adun Snowpaw, face-to-face -face in the center of the ring. And there's a lock-up collar and elbow tie-up between the two. Well, you know, I was about to say, isn't he going to take take his uh, shades off, but that's his black eye. That was the result of the attack by the Ascension this past Monday night inside the office of our chairman, Stuart Wharf. Overhand wrist lock from the gavel right now. Torquing on the arm. And now just deliver that elbow smash right to the forehead, going right back to the wrist lock. Going right back to that wrist lock. Take, just torquing on that arm. And now Razor Diesel firing back. Adun takes the hammer lock. Two evenly matched competitors here in this championship match. Of course, the edge and experience goes to Adun Snowpaw, even if he was inactive for a, for a number of years. Yeah, that's why they're even now, Johnny, because all that rust weighed down on Adun. Big hip toss right there, countered me to a side headlock takeover from a dune. <clears throat> you need some athleticism to pull that off, that's for certain. The gavel in control of the match right now with the side headlock on Razor Diesel, keeping hanging on to the head, hanging on to the neck of the extreme champion. How can a hip toss be countered with a headlock? That is insane. Continuing to hold on to that side headlock. Razor's trying to get to the ropes. Still hanging on to that side headlock. Squeeze in the head and the neck of Razor Diesel. And now they're in the ropes. The referee Earl orders the break. Well, there's a whip across the ring. Here comes the dude off the ropes. And a clothesline right there, countered by an arm drag into a t into an arm bar. 
great move right there from a dune snowpaw the gavel took him right over over with an arm drag then transitioned right into that arm bar my goodness so clothesline countered into an arm drag what now razor diesel trying to fight his way back up to the standing position they do he, he is successful and they go right back into a lockup And Razor was sticking a right hand right in the face of the gavel. I don't think he cared for that too much. He might have hit him in that eye that was already injured this past Monday night by the from the attack by the Ascension. And that would be a smart move. If you take your attention on that eye, it'll swell up. He can't see out of it, and that's his death perception and a lot of you know any of his way to fight back will drastically decrease forearm club right between the shoulder blades shoulder blades of a dude snowpaw from the extreme champion razor diesel off the ropes comes razor and leg lariat right there flattens the gavel into a roll up here from razor cut of one only a one before the gavel manages to get that shoulder up. This match is for the Extreme Championship here tonight. He may have taken a shot right to that already blackened eye. Like you said, if you've only got one eye to see out of, you, that's going to make things so much more difficult for you. Because you can't judge how things are happening. You can't really see... Can't really judge distance, no peripheral vision. Oh, look at that. Drop toll hold right there from the gavel. Puts puts Razor Diesel face first right into the mat. Oh, but he, his hand goes right to that eye again. He is still favoring that eye. That eye that was that was blackened Monday night in the attack in Stuart Wart's office, Stuart Wart's office by the Ascension. He is having a real tough time with that eye over there. He is in the corner, doesn't realize that Razor Diesel's right behind him, and Razor strikes with a drop kick from behind, puts Ooh. the head of a dude snowpaw right into that top turnbuckle. Oh, and that can only slow up that eye even more after getting smashed face first into that corner. Razor, Razor Diesel is preparing to charge in. At least that's what it appears like. A new snowpaw in a seated position in the opposite corner. No, he's just standing there waiting for him. Well, what that does is that gives that gives the gavel a, t a chance to re recuperate. Oh, here comes Razor. Look at this. And Razor strikes with a monkey flip, propelling Razor Diesel right into the turnbuckles. That's when Ian experience is coming in. Well, that's what happens when you give a guy too much time to recuperate. Now, if it had been somebody who had actually a decent amount of experience, they would have never let up on that eye. But Razor, he uh, doesn't have too much experience, even though he's uh, the extreme champion. The gavel is still favoring that eye. He must have got really, really got whacked in it because you can still see still trying to trying to find his way around the ring he's not having an easy time of it that's for certain razor diesel favoring the lower back after that after that monkey flip right into the corner meanwhile the action continues in this championship match this is for the extreme championship look at that german suplex right there from the gavel into a pinning combination kind of one two only a two count before razor's able to get the shoulder up he may not be able to be able to see out of that eye at all And if that's the case, that's going to make it just so much more difficult for the gavel to compete in this match here tonight. If I was Razor, at this point, I would go right off the ropes, come back, and hit him right with the high knee right in that eye. That would take that would take a dune out of this match. There'd be no way he could see right after that. 
Well, I can't really get a clean look at it, but it looks like that eye may be, if it's not completely closed, it may be well on its way. And there's a shot right there from a dune, and it it did not miss. This match is for the Extreme Championship. It's always on the line because it's 24-7 with that Extreme Championship. It could be inside this ring. It could be out in the parking lot. It could be at our sister federation. You you name it, anywhere. Anything could happen when you're, when you're defending a championship with a 24-7 rule attached to it. Right now, the action is in the ring between the champion Razor Diesel and the challenger, the Cavill Adun Snowpaw, right here tonight on Friday Night Edge. Don't forget, still main event to come, the undefeated Michael Carson going up against the undefeated Matt, Matt Azadar, the gunslinger taking on the world heavyweight champion, the VWE champion, Michael Carson, the last Carson standing. That's our main event tonight. Right now, the action continues. Big scoop slam right there. And now you see Razor Diesel favoring that back once again. That same, that same spine, well, of course, it's the only spine he has, but he took that monkey flip into the corner just a little bit earlier in the match. And he's been favoring that lower back ever since. Now the gavel going to work on the leg of Razor Diesel. And look at this. We're about to see a sharpshooter submission maneuver right there from the gavel. Extreme. The extreme champion is trapped in the center of the ring. There is, he's got to fight his way to. Oh, 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 look at this! Look who's at the top of the ramp. That is Bryce. That is Sir. <laughs> Here come the ascension once again. I don't. Not sure that. Oh, well, now a dude realizes it because he's got the samurai right in his. <laughs> Now the <laughs> What is Surat going to do here? <laughs> Folks, your winner of the match and still <laughs> moral victory because he just got tossed completely out of the ring by the samurai soon <laughs> so it's going to have to be another day for the gavel that's one of the gavel's old old school disappearing tricks. We've seen it before. Meanwhile, the ascension in the ring. The extreme champion Razor Diesel just got thrown over the top rope all the way down to the arena floor. He's fine. Well, he's struggling to get back up to his feet. Meanwhile, the Ascension is still in the ring. Well, if Razor was smart, he'd get his title and leave because there's a ref here and two people. They're a little still pissed off that there's no Adun. Well, you're right about that. I want to take a moment to say thank you and congratulations to our newest Patreon subscriber, Emma Dahl. Certainly appreciate your great support. That brings us a little bit closer to reaching our goal of $100 per month. If we can do that, we will provide as an extra added perk the live stream of our sister federation, WPWF. So thank you once again, Emma Dahl. Well, there's a dude. He's back in the ring. He doesn't see he doesn't see Surik right behind him. He's looking, he's staring right into the face of Bryce Ketterly, the man that he has been to war and back with. This makes for a real interesting situation here between these three, especially after what happened Monday night in the office of Stuart Worth, our chairman.
Well, I, I would venture to take a guess here and say that you can take this one all the way to Wrestle Series 10 as well in one way, shape, form, or another. Here comes here comes the samurai from behind. He is looks like he's ready to strike, and he just took that left and just dropped the gavel. So his name is Zurich the Stiff Hands Unumachi. And now he looks so badass with his stiff hands. <laughs> down to his knees to talk, to talk smack into the face of the gavel. Stiff hands, boo, stiff hands. They're just punishing the daylights out of the gavel here tonight on edge. WWE Universe not happy with what they are seeing here tonight from the Ascension. And look at this. Here comes our chairman once again. Stewart's had a busy night thus far tonight. Let's hear from our chairman. Well, 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 it seems you've had a little spot of bother. You know, we tried to warn you not to get involved with the sentience business, and well, you've just gone in a little too deep, haven't you? You know, Adun, you're in my court now. I am the judge, jury, and executioner, and you are frankly just one washed up old veteran trying to get his glory back. And frankly, you're just not going to win. And you know what, Dune? I'm going to set a little match for you. Just like the match you just had this day, except, you know, I'm going to raise the stakes. So next week, Dune, you want to face Ascension so bad. Well, you've got them in a handicap match. Oh, come on. Ta-ta for now. How fair is that? Put a Dune Snowpaw in a match against both members of the Ascension. Hey, he's the chairman. He makes it as fair as he wants. Well, at least give the guy a partner. Come on. Yeah, I mean, he's always been a loner. He's never asked for anyone for help, so why should anyone give him any? Well, I will tell you what, be here. Next time. Guarantee that. And you know what they say happens when you play with fire? You get burned. Folks, still to come, our VWE Women's World Champion, the absolute legend, Viola Beaumont, here tonight to take on Nady. And our main event, the undefeated gunslinger, Matt Azadar, taking on the VWE World Heavyweight Champion, the last Carson standing, Michael Carson. That's still to come tonight on Friday Night Edge. Our United States champion, the icon DHA, not thrilled to see the police officer release the architect of annihilation. You saw that earlier this evening. Those two headed for a confrontation guaranteed at Wrestle Series 10. I would be willing to bet. Uh, yeah, see it even better when a Dune faces Ascension. Because, well, by the way, he was yelling there. 
he might win one eye compared to his zero partners. <laughs> Please welcome your number one contender to the VWE Women's World Championship, the longest reigning bombshell, Maxine. And there she is. She's three weeks, three weeks away from her date with destiny. And the absolute legend, Viola Beaumont at Wrestle Series 10. If it were up to Maxine, she would be doing this match right here tonight with Viola Beaumont. No doubt about it. Viola, dear sister, you wanted to attack me from behind last week? Well, here I am. Come and do it to me face to face right now. Uh, does she never learn? Well, ask and you shall receive because here she comes, the VWE Women's World Champion, the absolute legend, Viola Beaumont. Viola Beaumont scheduled to face Nady here tonight. Well, it's just like Maxine. They're trying to call Viola down when she has something else to do tonight. Thank you. And yours looks just as good over on your waist. Maxine is in the ring. She is just waiting for Viola. She doesn't want to talk. She wants to fight. And as Viola said, easy there, psychopath. I just want to chat. Calm down. As Viola continues, I cannot help but laugh at the pair of main events for Wrestle Series at Yosef Cameron facing the last Carson stand in Michael Carson. Any other match you have, Squeaky Knee Maxine facing. The off against the best this grid has to offer, the absolute legend, Viola Beaumont. Two champions, two top, top performers in this business, leading all of you into a very bright future for virtual wrestling. You boo because you hate the truth. Mm. 
then two challengers broken down, worn out, has been desperate to cling to the glory and keep their names at the top of the card. Not caring that it is at the expense of the future town of this business. You know what? I ain't more worried about where my place on the card. I'm out there bringing in new guys and gals to get them into the performance center and off the pole so VWE actually has a future. For years, I've been the measuring stick that VWE has used to know if the next champions were ready for what they might come across once they have an opportunity to pick up a strap. Heck, you even faced me after you picked up the Queen of the Arena briefcase your rookie year. But you, my dear, grabbed that title and figured you could do whatever the hell you wanted this time. You defended it what, two, three times now since beating Marionetta? That goes all the way back to Beach Brawl. And that's why it all continues. It is not my fault. There is few legitimate contenders out there for my prize. The ones there are, I'm too scared to step up. At least, though, Michael gets to face a multi-time world champion in Seth Cameron. I get you. I find it a joke that you are in the Hall of Fame. You come out here and claim that it's because of your congratulations and go beyond and transcend the title. But we both know that's an excuse to cover up the fact that you've been riding the coattails since you arrived. You've never even won a Russell Series match until you, your face-painted joke of a husband carried you to one last year. Meanwhile, you face me. The very best in big match situations. My record at Beach Brawl, Elimination Royale, and Russell Series speak for itself. Claiming two championships, multiple defenses, and even beating you into a bloody pulp just this summer at Beach Brawl. That is why I am the absolute legend. Yeah. I know I took a good ass whipping at Beach Brawl. But I also remember, so did you. You walked around with that cane in your hand for a month because I threw you through an LED screen. I was back up and wrestling almost immediately. You did not look like much of a winner. And if you want to get beat up like that again, I say we do it right here and right now. And Zyro continues, no, not tonight. Our date is set at Wrestle Series 10. And I have a date tonight with someone far more challenging. But you're more than welcome to have a seat over there and watch how an actual champion takes care of business. You know what? I will take your offer up to sit, sit over there and watch your match, but I'll have to wait until another day to see how an actual champion takes care of business. Well, if 
folks, the VWE Women's World Champion is in the ring already. She is from San Diego, California, standing 5 feet 7 inches tall, weighing 152 pounds. She is the current reigning and defending VWE Women's World Champion, the absolute legend, Viola Beaumont. It appears we're being joined here at the broadcast position by the longest rating bombshell, Maxine. Welcome. We are awaiting the challenger for Viola Beaumont here tonight. Yeah, I like how Maxine pulling out. Oh, what? Viola was on the, using a cane for a month and she was in the ring right away. Do you forget? Maxine, you were wrapped up like a mummy during that time, and no one would medically clear you. You just didn't turn those reports in and just came to the ring. Please welcome from the Amazon rainforest in Manaus. She is 5 feet 6 inches tall, weighing 131 pounds. This is the Amazon warrior, Nady. Referee in charge of the action is Earl Woodson. You are seeing the woman who you will see in three weeks defend her BWE Women's World Championship, the absolute legend Viola Beaumont taking on the Amazonian warrior Nady. Right here on Friday Night Edge, they lock up in the center of the ring collar and elbow tie-up. The longest reigning bombshell, Maxine, joining us here at broadcast position. Right now, Viola is using her power to push Nady all the way back into the corner and just shoves her right back, that neck of Nady snapping right back on that top turnbuckle. And look at Nady rolling right out of it. She's right back in Viola's face. Viola tells her, don't fight. Just bend the knee to me, your champion. I don't think those words are in Nady's dictionary. I think there's only one word in Nady's dictionary. The word fight. I was about to say, that's not bravery. That's just ignorance, Johnny. Look at that, a clean break right there from, well, we thought a clean break. She just clotheslined, clotheslined Nady right over the top rope down to the floor. Striking a pose right in the center of the ring. And look at Nady, she's right back in the ring. I don't think Viola realizes she, well, now she sees her. And look at that clothesline right there from Nady. Just took Viola right down. Does Viola yet again underestimating her opponent? Well, maybe Nady has been watching Dagger compete. There's a second clothesline that just flattens the VWE Women's World Champion. Uh, it's hard not to underestimate your opponents when you won a Russell Series 10 that never had a success right. Big drop kick right there from Nady. Here comes Nady off the ropes. Big splash, and she nailed it. Count of one. Only a one count before Viola is able to get the shoulder up. Nady is in a position right here where she has absolutely nothing to lose. She is in the ring with the VWE Women's World Champion. Just think how that would propel her stock in this company if she could pick up a win here tonight. Oh, you're getting ahead of yourself, Johnny. Well, there's a chokehold right there from the from Viola. She caught Nady coming right in, just picked her up by the throat, and dropped her, now choking the daylights out of her. And now breaks the chokehold before referee Earl can get down there and start counting. Now you see those short punches right there from Viola, right off the right off the noggin of Nady. Uh, 
Canadian. Pretty sure, they had pretty sure those were closed fists. Offense. You know, I don't know. They looked open handed to me. But, you know, maybe you, you did say you've had some issues with that little monitor there, Johnny, so we never know. Yeah, Austin, take your sunglasses off. You might actually be able to see something for once. There's a kick right to the midsection uh -huh. of Nady doubles her over. Was that a, a series of palm thrusts? Look at that backbreaker <laughs> right there. Gut wrench backbreaker dropping the spine right across the knee. Now Viola going for a cover. Count of one, count of two. Nady gets the shoulder up. Yeah, that was a beautiful backbreaker. I'm sure Maxine couldn't perform something like that. Her knees would have gave out about as soon as she lifted her, probably. <laughs> I am not sitting in the best position here, that's for sure. Oh, don't worry. I'll behave myself. I can't say anything about Mr. Knight, though. Neck wrench hold from Viola Boma. That is a very painful maneuver right there. She's just screaming at Nady, give up, Savage. She's just twisting on the neck of the Amazonian warrior here tonight. And things just went from bad to worse for Nady because Viola is dropping those strikes right on the neck of Nady. It's great strategy, Johnny. Work over the body part, and it's not illegal. No, not so disputing she can that. So she do it as many times she wants. Now look at this. Nady's fighting back up to her feet. Elbow right to the gut. Oop. Went, went for a back suplex, but Nady landed on her feet. Check this out. And now Nady fires a left hand that just rocked, rocked Viola, followed by a right. Nady is living up to her trademark. She is fighting here. Viola went for a clothesline. Nady ducked it. Here she comes from the opposite ropes. Here comes Nady. And <laughs> oh, look at that. Vindication. Look at that from right there. Oh, Nady still gets the shoulder up. Ah. <sighs> Nady not finished yet here tonight. Here comes Too Viola off the ropes. Big knee drop. <laughs> Look at that. I'm not into Nady. She's had her low theories. One, two. And Nady still kicks out again. Now Viola's having words with the official. Johnny, why are you getting so excited? You're acting like kicking out is an offensive maneuver. That she's having some advantage by kicking out. She's just barely scraping by. Well, she do does because all that kicking out is pissing Viola off, and Viola definitely does not wrestle as well, well when her fuse is cut short. Well, you Viola know, is set that was for... Threw down that beach bra there, Maxine, because she was plenty pissed when she was beating your ass. Oh, she went for the V-cut, but Nady countered it. And look at Nady with a spear that just flattened Viola like a pancake. But she's having trouble capitalizing on it. Because her back, which was worked over masterfully by Viola, that's thinking ahead, Johnny. A couple of backbreakers. body that, part. Yep, a couple of backbreakers. That'll do it. And if that back is in miserable shape, you can't really do much of anything. And thus oh, I know that's true. To move her future in a match is pointless. Right. We always right now, have the all the recovery up, time in the world. <laughs> referee's up to a count of four. Both competitors still down. That may have been a desperation maneuver right there from Nady, but it certainly worked. She countered that feet cut. That's something you don't see every day. Now, Viola's back up to her feet first. Advancing towards Nady. Nady fires right back with a left and a right. Look at Nady going to work here on the Women's World Champion. Snap suplex from Nady. That a girl, you, Nady, stay on her. You talk about Viola having a short fuse. I think that fuse is getting shorter and shorter the longer this match continues. Nady is in the corner trying to get it together, trying to trying to recuperate all this. I don't, I don't know about this. Nady's going up top. 
says Nady, did she just learn a new word? Big splash, and she nailed it. Count of one, two. Oh, that was close. Oh, no, 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 no. Folks, Nady has just learned a new word. And she didn't learn to be any smarter in the ring, because once again, she's clutching <laughs> place to land those backbreakers to incontestate competitors later in the match. That was a hair's width away from being a three count right there, but Viola's back up to her feet. She's faced, she's facing outward in the corner. Now she's turned around. What is Nady going to do here? Here comes Nady. What has she got in mind? Oh, she went for a splash, <laughs> but Viola got out of the way at the last instant. And now here comes Viola. Oh, look at that knee express right there from behind. Nady didn't even see it coming. And now Viola is set. Oh, it's time for this in. I think Viola's done playing around. And here comes Viola with a kick right to the midsection. And here is a power bump uh -oh. crack breaker. Oh, goodness. <laughs> that is the. Oh, and look at this. Here comes Volition. Oh, She's got it oh, look at locked that in, locked in right in the center of the ring. There is nowhere for Nady to go. Viola is screaming at Nady to tap out. Oh, this is great. It works the back and the legs. It's just perfectly. And there it is. Nady can't take any more. She has no choice but to tap out. The vial is not breaking the hold. Um, excuse me a moment. Well, here comes here comes Maxine. Viola refuses to break the submission. Viola, watch out for the squeaky knees. And folks, here comes Maxine. Ha 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 she's just a little slow. Well, Nady may be injured here. It would be unfortunate she learned a brand new word tonight. This is the first time I've ever seen her say anything other than fight. Uh... If you gave Viola just like a couple more seconds, she would have learned the words, please, let go, I give up. Well, thank thank goodness Maxine was there to prevent serious injury on, on behalf of Nady. Because Nady is back, is trying to get back up to her feet. Your WWE Women's World Champion victorious here tonight. Will she be victorious in three weeks at Wrestle Series? Not if Maxine, not if Maxine has anything to say about it. Now Maxine providing some aid to Nady. Let's hear it for Nady, folks. She learned a brand new word tonight. Maxine's not going to have anything to say, but no more if Iola locks on that maneuver. If she locks her in that. With her squeaky knees, she'll be tapping that mat like a drummer boy. <laughs> that match three weeks away at Wrestle Series 10. One of the one of the events coming up at Wrestle Series Week will be a live insider.
Jones. He is the gunslinger, Matt Asadar. for the gunslinger Matt Azadar. I think I'll be handling the net. Set to begin here tonight between the gunslinger Matt Azadar and the VWE World Heavyweight Champion Michael Carson. They meet in the center of the ring. And there is a lockup, collar and elbow tie up. Look at the size differential between these two here. Uh, but it's, Michael has faced many competitors, including people like Benjamin Nirvana, that's even bigger than Matt, and he has beaten them. Nobody ever disputed the talent of Michael Carson. 
right now he is working over the arm overhand wrist lock now he's trying to transition into a hammer lock but that the arm was too big now it's mad as star with the wrist lock Matt Azadar in control of the match at the opening seconds here. And look at Michael's now trying to do the flip escape. <laughs> and he just, slapped, <laughs> he just slapped him right in the mouth. And look at that. He just shoved the world heavyweight champion right on his keister. Oh. Here comes Azadar off the ropes. Big boot floors Michael Carson. <laughs> off the ropes once again. Big Hello? leg drop. He may have just pissed off the gunslinger right there. Into a roll-up. Only, <laughs> only gets a count of one before Carson's able to get the shoulder up. I don't know what he was expecting. Well, a few he's... lucky shots ain't going to win him a match against the world champion. Well, sometimes you may go for a cover like that just to send a message to your opponent. And look at that big tree trunk of a forearm club right there from the gunslinger, right between the shoulder blades of the world heavyweight champion. Oh, come on, Earl. He's picking him up by the beard. And knife edge chop right there. There's a whip into the ropes. Here comes Michael Carson off the ropes. Asadar went for the clothesline. Michael ducked right underneath it. Here he comes from the opposite side. And there's a <laughs> single leg, leg drop kick there. Drops Azadar down to one Wii. Oh, oh, look at that. Look at that. Ends that was a right great there. one. Yeah, it still was a great one. Michael Carson going to work. Say, ooh, right to the abdominals. Drops that knee right in there. As I always said, Johnny, everyone's the same height when they're on their back. Well, no we're matter seeing how that, big he is now. We are seeing that prove to spades right now. And there's a big fist drop right there from Michael Carson. Right off the skull of the gunslinger. Here's a pickup right in the center of the ring. And a pair of elbows, uh, three elbows right there from the world champion. Went for a kick, but Azadar caught him. Uh, ah. And now drops that elbow right across the knee and fires a left right in there. Now a right. Oh. Uh. DDT! Uh, damn it, Michael. That puts the world champion face first right into the mat. Azadar back up on his feet. Check it off, Michael. Here's a pickup from the undefeated gunslinger, Matt Azadar. Here's a whip into the corner. Michael up against the turnbuckles. Here comes, here comes Matt with a big splash. Oh, come on, he's in the corner. Count, Earl. Count. And now firing punches right into the bread basket. Of now the you world get champion. one, Jesus Christ. Cinch is in the front face lock, dragging the world heavyweight champion right back to the center of the ring. Keeping that front face lock cinched in there tight. Look at this. Big suplex right there from the six foot eleven gunslinger, Matt Azadar. And now, Matt's going for a pin. Count of one. Count of two. Only a nah. two count. So Matt Azadar has to go right back here to right back to work. Whips Michael Carson into the corner once again. Comes fire. Comes charging in. Oh, <laughs> oh look at that. Did you see that? And oh, there we go. Missile drop kick right <laughs> off the top rope from the world champion. You got this, Michael. And the forward momentum of the gunslinger, Matt Azadar, has just been halted right here in the match. Big missile drop kick right off that top rope. Now here's a pickup. From Michael Carson, the last Carson standing. 
And, oh. oh, that back crescent kick right there. That just took Matt Azadar right off his feet. It was a back wrench kick, actually. Now, Carson going to work on the left leg, that tree trunk-like leg of the gunslinger, which is actually a brilliant strategy. Dropping the knee, oh, yeah. dropping the elbow right onto that knee of Matt Azadar. Anything Michael Carson could do to keep <laughs> Azadar grounded would work very well in his favor. That's perfect, Michael. Perfect. Now he's got he's got Azadar favoring that left leg, going right back to work on it. And there's another toe oh. kick right to the hamstring. Oh, those things hurt like hell. Well, that's, that's even worse when you get it from Michael Carson. He has the most deadliest kicks in VWE. Well, the world champion is now keeping the pressure on. And look at that Muay Thai oh. spin back kick right in the gut. Here comes Michael off the ropes. Big drop kick. Drops the gunslinger down to one knee. And oversized bear. Oh, oh. <laughs> look at that. That's a, that that's I gotta say, that's brilliant right there. He just hit that drop kick right to the knee, the the, the uninjured knee of Matt Azadar. Oh, he went for a back body drop, but Michael rolled right over the top. Here he comes from the opposite ropes. And now takes <laughs> takes the, Takes out both knees of the gunslinger, a pair of drop kicks, one to each knee, and that worked to perfection for the VWE World Heavyweight Champion here tonight. Oh, this is just great, Johnny. Great. <laughs> Look at him. He says, you're slow. And here's a pickup right back in the center of the ring. Look at this. Oh, he went for a suplex, but Azadar blocked it. He went for that suplex a third time, a fourth time, but each time Azadar has continued to block it, so oh. he fires in another Muay Thai spin back kick. Look at this, oh, oh. calf killer, calf killer. Oh, right there. <laughs> right a in the middle. Submission maneuver right in the center of the ring. That's a long distance even for somebody six foot 11. Look he how much he's wrenching that back. Uh, the leg isn't supposed to bend that far, I can tell you that. But Azadar is fighting. He's trying to get to the ropes to force the break here. Come on, Michael. Wrench back. Make him pay for every inch he crawls. The gunslinger is fighting and clawing, trying to reach yeah. those ropes. He's yeah, almost him, there. Yeah, ask him once. There's, there, he made the ropes. That's going to force the break right there. When, when did he die a fire arrow, I think? He didn't ask Matt once during that entire time. Matt could have been screaming mercy for all we knew. Well, Michael Carson's going to have to break the calf killer. He finally breaks it at four. The damage may be done to the, to the leg of the gunslinger, Matt Azadar. The undefeated streak could be coming to an end here in just mere minutes. Oh, now Earl wants to do his job when Matt's in the, in the ropes. Not when he's supposed to ask him. Oh, I got a premonition of what's coming here. And if uh, and if I'm right, it will not be pretty for the gunslinger. Oh, oh did you oh. see that? Just banging the knee of Matt Azadar right off that steel, the edge oh. of that steel screen. Oh, yeah. Surrounds the ring post a second and, uh, time. You can hear Azadar screaming in pain. That's right, Michael. Remember those pointers I gave you. Knee bone against metal. Not a pleasant feeling, I can tell you that. Uh. I don't even know if Azadar can stand at this point. And if he can't stand all that power, all that height, it's useless. And Matt Michael Carson going right back to work here, shoving the six foot eleven gunslinger back into the corner. Boy, that leg of his has taken so much punishment in this match. How much more can Azadar take? 
championship not on the line in this match, but Matt Azadar's undefeated streak certainly is. And we could be seeing that coming to an end here in just mere minutes. Here comes Michael Carson once again. And oh, running man. high knee lift. Didn't quite get the face with it right to the chest. Either way, it's certainly effective. And another oh. Muay Thai spin back kick into a neck breaker. Oh, yeah. Yes. Ha, ha, ha. Look at that, Johnny. He just has Matt in the palm of his hand now. Michael Carson in firm control of the match now. A stomp right to the midsection into a cover. Count of one, two, only a two count as Azadar gets the shoulder up. Wait, what? Oh, whoa, what whoa, we, whoa. What, what is this? Got, what do we got happening now? It's the Eliminator, Seth Cameron. Hey, 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 hey. He has no business down here. Earl, do your job. Get Seth out of here. He doesn't belong ringside. He don't got a manager's license. Michael Boy, Carson's Michael, opponent for Wrestle Series 10. job right now. Figured I'd come out here and lend my support while you're taking on Matt Azadar. Let's see if you can take an undefeated streak, huh? Oh, oh, don't don't mind me. Go back to the action. I'm just going to make myself comfortable with the fans here. Get a really close-up view of the action and see just what you're capable of. That is Michael Carson's opponent three weeks from tonight at Wrestle Series 10, the Eliminator Seth Cameron. The gunslinger went back into the ropes. That injured leg of his has got him in a great deal of pain. And now oh, look at this. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Things right. are going from bad to worse for the gunslinger very quickly. Look at this from Michael Carson here. Draping the knee around the middle rope. Pulling on it, trying to dislocate the knee. Here comes once again. Oh, yeah. That nice little lemon. Oh, oh, oh. A corner <laughs> in Zaguri that just rung the bell of the gunslinger. And the eliminator, like Seth said. Cameron, watching from ringside. As I said, Johnny, have you seen anyone since Matt's come to the main roster handle him this well? Well, he oh. went, he just went for the cannonball, but Azadar oh. slipped out of the ring at the last little instant. Little slow, little slow there, little slow. I mean, come on, Mike, you can do this, right? Right? You can you can beat this man, right? Matt, come on, you got to get back in there, man. We got to see just if Michael's capable of taking your undefeated streak, since he thinks he can claim that he can take anyone's undefeated streak. Right now, the Eliminator, Seth Cameron, playing mind games with the VWE World Champion. Oh, yeah, he claims Don't. he's coming down here. Jeez. Come on, Michael. Get up. Let's get up. Come on. You can do it. And there's a whip right back into the corner. This time it's Michael Carson who hits the corner hard. Here comes the here comes Azadar in after him, very slowly hobbling on that injured leg and setting him up for a knife edge chop right there, right off the chest. Here comes a second one. You can hear those chops reverberating throughout the entire Empire City Coliseum. A third one. Come on, Earl. You know it's called counting because they're in the ropes. You could do it any time now. And the gunslinger says it's time for payback. Now he drapes the leg of Carson over the middle oh, rope. On. And now trying to dis Count. dislocate the knee of the Four world champion. Do something. And now just grabbed him by the beard and tossed him three quarters of the way across the ring. Oh, come on. There's so much against the rules right now. Well, give credit to referee Earl Woodson. He's just letting him fight. I'm not giving credit for that. I like people to actually enforce the rules. Since when did you give a damn about the rules? Come on. 
Come on, Michael. Come on. Let's go. You can do this. Come on. Uh, uh, don't worry. I'll be your only fan for the moment. Well, aside from the guy behind me. Come on, Michael. Let's go, Michael. Let's go, Michael. Repeat and stop. Let's go, Michael. Anyone? No one? I'm, I'm the only one who's going to get in this chat? Okay, that's fine. A series of stops right there from the Gunslinger. And now Matt Azadar once again in control of the match. And look at that. Another kick right to the midsection. Belly to belly suplex right over the top. You know, he claims he came down here just to watch. But he, he's taking every chance to get on mic and yell and distract. Hell, he could have come down here without his music. And then we wouldn't have distracted nobody. Azadar's got to go right back to work here. He's got the VWE world champion in a compromising position. How's those ceiling lights, Michael? Get used to seeing them, because you're going to see it real soon against me, too. And look at this. It's a lion tamer from the gunslinger. Submission maneuver right in the center of the ring. Oh, come on, Michael. Come on. Azadar has got that lion tamer locked in tight. Check There's him, Rob. No, nowhere Check him. for Michael Carson to go. Looks like he's going to tap. Looks like he's going to cry. He's not going to cry. What the hell? Lion tamer submission hold locked in and now broken by the gunslinger. Ah, uh, ha, ha. Ah. Uh. See? All that's that work what, earlier what paid off. He was unable to maintain it. That's what happened. Because See, of all the punishment. just like Viola, Michael made it pay off in the end. Well, right now, Azadar is trying to get some feeling back into that leg of his. He's trying to stretch it out, trying to slap it, doing, doing whatever it takes. Azadar going right back to work. This is the main event here tonight on Friday Night Edge. The gunslinger, Matt Azadar, undefeated since coming to VWE against the VWE World Heavyweight Champion here tonight. And now you see a series of kicks that are both adequately countered. Muay Thai spin back kick right there for Michael Carson. Crocodile kick just rung the bell of the gunslinger off the ropes. Oh, good. What a count. Oh, goodness gracious. Did you see that from the world champion? That was as impressive as anything you're ever gonna see. You gonna you gonna stand around or are you gonna actually take advantage? Michael Carson go for a cover here, count of one, count of two, Azadars gets the shoulder up at two. Really? Only a two count? You know, if this was your brother, this would already be over. Oh, that's probably the wrong thing to say to Michael Carson. <laughs> here it comes look at that. Look at that right there, a moonsault from the top rope. And it connected. Uh, oh, look at this. He That's has perfect. got the six foot eleven gunslinger neutralized right in the center of the ring. Once again, taking too much time, just wasting your time. Could have gone for a cover there, Mike. Come on. You say you can take me on. Let's see it. Well, no, Michael Carson firing in the MMA-style kicks right there to the to the shin and the knee. The injured leg of, of Matt Azadar here. And there's a big drop kick that puts Azadar right up against the top rope. Michael hits the ropes and comes off. What is going to happen here? And Azadar just back body oh. dropped it right over the top rope down to the floor. Oh, that looked like it hurt. I bet it did. You okay there, Mike? You okay? Michael Carson went flying all that way over the top rope down to the floor, and he's got Seth right in his face talking trash to him. <sighs> Seth has not touched him, not at all. He's just talked to him. 
at very inconvenient times. Now here comes Adesar outside the ring after him. Stomps to the world champion outside the ring on the floor. Once again, referee Earl's just letting him fight. Even though he's telling him to bring it back in, but he's not counting. There's, there's a whip right up against the barricade. Boy, you guys think you got great seats. This this is this is like the best seat in the house right now. Oh yeah, walking around the ringside area. I don't doubt that at all. Wish I could do that. There's a series of nice knife, knife edge chops right there from the gunslinger right off the chest. That's gotta be seven or eight of them that that Carson's taken in this match. Now drop some snake eyes right off the top of the barricade. Well, finally, referees, referee Earl is up to a count of two. Uh-oh. You see, you hear Matt Astor says, Seth, you might want to get out of the way of this one. Here comes a whip across. And the back of Michael Carson hitting those steel steps. Azadar is back in the ring. Mike, you need the number for a chiropractor after this? Because I know of one. Well, that's it. I rolled back into the ring and rolled right back out. That's going to reset the count. And now look at this. Front face lock on the on the ringside area floor from the gunslinger, Matt Azadar. Look at this. Oh, come on, Michael. He's got him set. Oh, oh delayed suplex right on the floor. Oh, I think that might not have been the best move. He clutched right at that knee right after it. He sure did. That may have taken as much out of him as it did out of Michael Carson. But here's a pickup from the gunslinger going right back to work. And he just tossed Michael right back into the ring. No, Austin, I know uh, you told him you take care of that, but uh, I think I'm going to take it off your hands. Oh, look at this, Seth wait, Cameron. Wait, wait, wait. Just, he just took the championship that belongs to Michael Carson. And I don't think, I don't think, I, I don't think Michael Carson realizes it yet. Azadar firing in with a big stiff shot off the ropes. Big rolling elbow right there. Just drops the world champion. Boy, it. Looks great on my shoulder again, doesn't it? Count of doesn't one. No. Count of two. No. Only a two count. And Seth Cameron is here at ringside with Michael Carson's VWE championship strung over his shoulder. I don't think I don't think Carson's seen it yet. Hey Mike, doesn't it look great on me? I mean, guys, doesn't it look great on me? No. And now, Azadar calling for the end. Are we going to see a six-shooter? Michael, block him out. There you go. Oh, look at that yes. jawbreaker right there <laughs> from Michael Carson. And oh, now, there we go. Drop kick right to the knee, taking the knee right out from underneath. All oh, nomad oh, okay. kick. That nomad it's kick just it's over. that may be that may be it right there. That is the signature of the VWE World Heavyweight Champion, the Nomad Kick, and you just saw it on a six foot eleven gunslinger. Going so for a cover. Count of one, two, one, and there's a two, foot on the ropes. Three, three, no. Only a two that was count. After the three. Only a two count. Azadar got the foot on the ropes. The referee saw it. I am telling you, Braden would have had this in the bag already. Maybe you really are the lesser person. <laughs> the match will continue here. <laughs> Seth is going to flip out when he does see it, though. Oh, now he sees it. Now Looks he sees good, it. doesn't it? 
Looks good, doesn't it? Go ahead, lay a hand on me. See what happens. Well, Michael Carson is right in the face of Seth Cameron. Oh, says, don't Give worry. I'm keeping it warm. You it's not going to be yours much longer. Don't worry about it. You don't need to worry. What you do need to worry about is getting counted out in this match or losing this match in general. You want to prove something. Why don't you go beat that man in the ring who has an undefeated streak? You, you're going to get counted out, man. Well, Michael Carson's running the risk of being counted out. The referee just begun his count. He's up to two. And he just spit in the face of the Eliminator. Did you see that? Yes, I did. <laughs> that's that's cool, Mike. That's cool. That's cool. Well, the match here continues on Friday Night Edge. Hey, Mike! Hey, Mike! Hey, Mike! What the fuck is he doing? Hey, Mike! You okay up there? You okay? Well, what's Seth, the matter? What's the matter? Are you a punk ass bitch that's gonna end up getting beat again? Because it seems like that's what's going to happen. What did oh, I went, say? He went for the flying form. He got caught with the double A spine buster. You can't tell me you're defending these actions, Johnny. I am staying out of it. I'm just calling. <laughs> and you hear the gunslinger, Matt Azari, says, This is for you, Eliminator. He's waiting for Michael. Oh, he's calling for the six shooter. Here comes Azadar, six shooter. <laughs> Cover. One, two, and three. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner of the match. The undefeated gunslinger, Matt Azadar. Oh, you couldn't beat him, Mike. You couldn't beat an undefeated streak. It's incredible. You thought you had it in the bag and you couldn't beat it. Just like at Wrestle Series, you're not going to take mine either. Good job, Matt. Good job. It'll be interesting to see if Seth leaves with that championship belt. This son of a bitch, egotistical bastard. Well, now Seth is in the ring. With Michael's championship belt right over his shoulder. Mike, as great as it looks on me, I'm not going to take it away from you like everybody else does. At least not tonight. So you know what? Here. Here's your title. I'm going to lay it right in front of you. Because in just a few weeks, I'm going to take it from you again. Just in a few weeks, once again, when you think you're going to take an undefeated streak, you're going to look up at the lights, and you're going to realize, I will win. Wrestle Series 10. Your moment is over. It's 21 short days away. Three weeks until these two face for that championship. Ah. You close it out, Johnny. I got to check up on Michael. Well, folks, that's going to do it for us tonight on Friday Night Edge. We thank you all so much for coming out to see us. Join us Sunday afternoon, 2 p.m. SLT for Pulse. Okay, so I guess that's it. Hope you guys enjoyed watching VWE Friday Night Edge. And if you want to see more VWE Friday Night Edge, um, if you see more of the 
of the event or the show all you have to do is like the video share to your friends subscribe to the channel so guys thank you for watching and see you next time bye bye Oh, no, no, no.